Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are all doing well. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to give the normal disclaimer. <clears throat> This is not financial advice. Please do your own research. In this video, I'm just going to be sharing what has been working for me. But I also wanted to plug you with a tool that I found recently that could help you with your budgeting. If you're anything like me, then you have a lot of emails sitting in your inbox. And having a web app like Toilety Wallet will sift through everything to keep a hold of the important receipts that are in your inbox and even tickets that you need if you're preparing for a trip. Now, receipts, we all know they're important, but they're probably more important than you think. If you want to return something, prove that you bought something that is faulty or dangerous or that has been recalled, or if you simply want to keep a track of how much you are spending, Having a receipt wallet is very important and the Toilety wallet helps you keep track of all the receipts, the ticket that is sent to your email inbox. But also Toilety wallet has partnered with some of our favorite brands and those brands are going to be gifting you stuff for simply being in the Toilety community. Get your email synced and find your digital receipts in your digital receipt wallet. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are all doing well. In today's video, we are going to be talking about money, investments, and credit. I recently did a video talking about investments, things that people are doing that you might not want to do, but also what I have been doing. And a lot of people in the comments told me that they wanted me to do a video going more in depth about my credit score. And I thought it would be helpful if I add along just the basic things that I have been doing to help me improve my money, money management, and all of that. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Well, I don't know what that was. My name is Courtney Daniela Boating. I am your new online sister and I am currently on a journey of growing and glowing in all areas of life. And I want to share that journey with you through transparent and candid conversations. On this channel, we just talk about everything and we are just real about it. So if you wanna join that journey and be involved in these conversations, please do hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video from me. But without further ado, let's go and talk about money, baby. So let me start off by saying I only really got serious about my money in the last one year. I jumped straight into self-employment after university and it was a massive roller coaster of a journey but the one thing that it hit the hardest was my finances and being young first of all you are already strapped for cash but then imagine not having like a steady income or a steady job that brings in a steady income. Being self-employed is filled with the highs and lows of sometimes having money and then many rainy days of being broke and for me it was really really tough to get a wrangle on or a handle on um, my finances because they were just so all over the place they were extremely unpredictable so I just want to start off by saying this no matter what situation you are in right now please do not let videos like this or any other you know finance related channels or lifestyle related channels make you feel bad about what it is that you currently have as long as you are trying to improve your situation or just to be happy with your situation you are winning baby girl and that's what I basically wanted to start off that by saying because I think it's very easy to get discouraged when other people talk about their money and how much they've made um, but I really just want this to be informational informational informative oh I really want this to be informative helpful encouraging the main thing that preceded me getting serious about my finances was me actually being on a stable income and that is one thing that I would definitely say no matter what you're thinking about in terms of investments right now invest in yourself enough to get to a place where you have a stable income a stable income in the sense that at least one stream of your income needs to be recurring consistent and, and reliable and I think that it's it's easy to look at all these other strategies of investment and think yeah let me put my money into that but really focus your primary amount of energy into something that is going to pay you consistently and bring in money consistently so that you can keep up with your lifestyle um, and so that you can do all these other things that we're about to talk about so for me I actually put myself on a salary last year summer and it was great to finally have money coming in but I really wanted to be intentional and um, with the fact that 
that now that I'm making money for the first time, like a, a good amount of money for the first time, I actually want to make sure that I am saving because this has been my first opportunity to save. Whilst I was at university, I wasn't really a saver. I was definitely more of a spender. I was doing the most and I, I'm ashamed <laughs> of how much money that I spent on like clothes and takeaways and Ubers and all of that. Um, but it's the past and I really enjoyed my time. I was living my best comfortable life. I had no money in my savings as of, you know, early last year. And so I really wanted to create an emergency fund. So I put, started of putting money away from that for that as well as having some money aside that I invest actively so my principal way of saving is I have an ISA um, I have a basic ISA and I know there is you know conversations right now about you know saving your money isn't really where it's at and I kind of completely agree um, you know with interest rates being as low as they are currently in the UK interest rates are about 1%, 0.1% or something like that, um, I get very minimal interest on my savings account. So what I use my savings account for is my emergency fund. You can put your emergency fund in maybe something that brings a bit more of an investment, like a stocks and, share, I, stocks and shares ISA, but mine is currently in a basic ISA. Um, my ISA gives the minimum, you know, National Bank of England amount of interest, but what it's basically there for is if I need that money straight away, it's not caught up in other investments like a house or in a crypto wallet or in stocks and shares to be pulled out or to possibly go down. That savings ISA is for money that I need to be there and to be that amount, if that makes sense. Basically, I would recommend using an ISA or an instant savings account, um, which gives you the basic amount of interest according to the Bank of England. Um, if you want the money to stay that amount. So for example, if you know you want to save £10,000 and you need that £10,000 for something specific, if you were to lose your job, you would need £10,000 to um, you know, keep up your expenses for six months or you need £10,000 to go towards a house deposit or you need £10,000 for a holiday fund, whatever it may be, you know you need that specific amount, keep that in the ISA because it won't adjust. The price won't, will definitely not go down. And um, if anything, they'll just add to it a couple of pennies, but at least you know that that amount is there. If you go and put that 10,000 pounds and you risk that capital on other forms of investment, you, you haven't really saved that money. You, you're using it as kind of working capital for you as an investment and it, it's risk. So that means that £10,000 could fall to £5,000 if the, you know, the stock market goes down or something like that. And you might, you know, not, and you need 10000 So keeping an ISA, I would say, is great for like emergency funds and keeping specific amounts that you know you need. The next thing is investments. So for me, primarily you want to invest in education. I believe education has the power to actually transform lives and to transform to transform communities um, and nations. And it's important for you to get educated in whatever way possible. That could take the form of going to get another degree, going to you know do a master's or um, a PhD or whatever could help you advance or a diploma, whatever could help you advance in your career. Or it may take the form of you spending time and investing time, money and effort into doing an online course. Um, I've taken quite a few online courses just to help me with things like editing, marketing skills that I need to actually do my day-to-day -day work um, that's what I invest my money in and of course you can do things like Skillshare, Udemy um, and other things that I will list in the description box if you want to open that up to find some resources um, but education is really really important you may want to buy some books to help you get to know more about your industry or even to know more about productivity and self-development anything that you can do to invest in yourself and actually create measurable outcomes comes to measure the results of those investments. It's very easy to just keep buying books off of Amazon or on Audible um, and, you know, not listening to them, but using that as a way to kind of pump yourself up as investing in yourself. But really, you need to have measurable outcomes of these investments. You know, are you going to take that course and then go on to progress in your job? For example, you may want to take a course and then in six months progress in your workplace. So get a promotion or you may want to to, you know read a couple books on sales and become a better salesperson and have better an increase in sales numbers all of those things are need to be measured and if you're going to invest in something you want to see facts and figures
figures and stats and all of that. Definitely create a way to measure the way that you invest in yourself or it just becomes a really fluffy term that we kind of use as an excuse to just spend money. A way that I am currently investing at the moment, I talked about it in my previous vlog, is in cryptocurrencies. I've been looking into cryptocurrencies. The market is still all bleeding blood in the street. But I did take time to invest in myself in learning cryptocurrency and learning about cryptocurrencies um, and investing in that. So everyone was used asking what exchange I use or what brokerage I use. I use Kraken. Um, I also use Binance, but Binance is currently going through a few things with the UK government. So if you can get Binance where you are, you can use that as well. Um, but I use Kraken and it's a really simple interface that you can use. Um, and I've invested in a few coins. Obviously, again, I am not um, a financial advisor, so I'm not actually going to tell you what coins I have bought, um, especially because right now there's a lot going on with the crypto market and it's just very volatile. And then the third thing that I've been looking into about investment is property. And I currently don't own a property, but I really do want to look into it. And it may be in my future, but I want to explore um, basically the benefits of that and how I can get involved in the property market. Because if there's any way of investing that is extremely straight, stable, it is the property market. Um, house values and house prices have continued to increase. And I, I would highly recommend, you know, for you to look to get involved in property in whatever capacity you can. If you do want to do that, of course, it is not by force. There are other ways of investing. The majority of people who have become um, millionaires are property owners. And that's just a reality that I think you should be thinking about, sis. And finally, credit score. A huge way that I've been working on myself financially is growing my credit score growing my credit score has been necessary because if you live in a country like the UK or in America or to be honest most of the western world you live in a heavy credit or debt economy your your nation borrows money you borrow money um, and you pay it back hopefully with interest and that is essentially what a credit card does a credit card is you spending money that you don't you may not particularly have at the moment but it is credited to you and then you pay it back at a later date i've spoken about this before but a massive misconception i had about credit was the idea that everybody starts off with good credit i'm here to tell you that they don't um, most of us start off with very basic pretty much poor credit um, and then we build it up over time the more we show that we are reputable uh, borrowers of money and and you know we pay back money on time and effectively and all of that so improving your credit score makes it easier to navigate through um, borrowing money and so if you want to invest in your business like this is something that I did last year if you want to invest in your business you can go and get a business loan business loans will require you to have good credit as the owner of the business and so you want to improve your credit score to show people listen I have a good credit history every time I borrow money or every time I buy something that I haven't paid for immediately I do pay it back on time you can trust me with this money that you are giving me your credit score is basically all about trust how trustworthy are you with money that we are going to lend you if you want to get a mortgage that is a form of debt if you're going to take on debt you want to prove that you can repay debt and so really paying attention to how much money you borrow and how effectively you pay it back is really important your credit score the number itself isn't all that you should be fixated on I have learned that your credit history and your credit report matters massively because that is what tells about your behavior your credit report will show that you know if you've got missed payments or you know the bailiffs have been at your door your credit report will basically tell of that if you've had any sanctions against you and stuff like that and um, so what I basically did to build my credit score quickly because I'm an impatient person and I wanted to use my credit score specifically for something is um, I applied for two credit cards at the same time let me actually preface this by saying this this is not the best thing to do you shouldn't rush building your credit there is actually no need to as long as you give yourself enough time before you know you need to do something major like go out and get a mortgage or something like that um you can take as long as you want to build your credit because you know you can build it over a lifetime if you want to so what i would actually recommend you to do is take out a low interest credit card something that if you are using your credit card because you need the money um you can 
can pay back easily. You can pay back the interest easily. Do not go and get a high interest credit card if you're already struggling to pay for the things that you're buying. It's going to leave you in further and further and further debt. Um, and that's not cute. As you use that credit card, you want to pay it off over time. Now, huge tips. When you get your credit card, your credit utilization needs to be low. What is credit utilization? How much of your credit card do you use? If you have a credit card with a limit of 500 pounds, it means the most you can spend and charge to your credit card is 500 pounds or $500, whatever it may be. You want your credit utilization optimally to be 10%, which means in a month, you don't wanna really go over spending 50 pounds on that credit card. I know you have a credit limit of 500 pounds, and this is what I mean. If you actually need your credit card, this may not be relevant, but if you're just trying to use a credit card to build your credit score, you wanna keep your credit utilization low. What this basically tells people is you don't need a lot of debt. You're, you're playing the credit game. Credit is annoying because it's not really a reflection of whether you have money, it's whether it's more of a reflection on how well do you do with borrowing money. So what you wanna do is you keep your credit utilization low so that it always seems like you have money um, and then pay it back on time. Pay back your credit, at least your minimum payment, but preferably your full balance, right? Your full statement balance, pay it off, by the time you know it's the end of the month for you whenever that may be pay it off before it starts to accrue any debt and that's what i basically do with my credit cards even though my credit cards have interest rates of like 39 percent, i always pay off um, my balance before it grows any interest any interest so i never pay interest even though the interest rates are so high on my credit cards um, and that's because i pay on time i always keep my credit utilization below 10 percent, and i always pay it back and i saw my i did that on both credit cards i use aqua and vanquist i did that on both credit cards and my credit score just skyrocketed um, and i would highly recommend you do it if you're looking for a quick fix um, but like I said, credit really shouldn't really be a quick fix. You can do it over time. Of course, things like being signed up to the electoral roll, um, paying your phone bill on time, not missing a payment on any bills like that um, are great ways to build up your credit as well over time. Um, if you ever take out like a line of credit on a piece of furniture or an appliance, paying it back on time subscriptions are not lines of credit so um being signed up to netflix and paying that every month is not going to affect your credit score whatsoever so um actually get yourself a line of credit in some way if you are looking to build up your credit score i wish i had started building my credit score from you know pretty much 17 18 years old whilst i was at university um, so I would highly recommend if you are one of my younger babes over here, please do start building up your credit from as early as possible. So that's what I would say. So yes, that is what I have to say about money, investments and credit um, and what I have been doing to kind of improve my finances. Um, I am definitely not where I want to be yet, but I am so much further than I was last year. And I'm really proud of myself for that. And I really thank God for that um, because last year was a huge season of faith for me financially but god has proven as always he really is a provider in every circumstance um, and i'm looking to steward my money well as you should be as well so i hope this video has been helpful if it has please give it a thumbs up um, and if you haven't already please definitely subscribe and turn on your notifications leave a comment down below on any more tips you may have on money investments and a credit you are probably at a different stage in your journey than i am if you have any questions as well you can leave them down below please share your wisdoms down there in the comment section i will talk to you in my next video and as always you already know the deal stay beautiful and stay blessed Mwah.